Hello and welcome back. It's time to get our LoRa Discovery EndNode up to the cloud on Senate's US-based LoRa network. Now we have two options here, either one of Senate's existing commercial towers or via your own gateway, such as this multi-tech conduit. How do we know if we have coverage? Well, let's head on over to www.senateco.com. That's S-E-N-E-T-C-O.com. If we click on the coverage link, we can scroll down, enter our zip code, or scroll around the map and check for coverage. It's quite well covered in the Bay Area, as well as the East Coast, and rapidly being deployed in other parts of the country. The next thing to do is go to the developer portal link and apply for a developer account. Now if we don't have network coverage we're going to have to supply our own gateway and connect it to the Senate network such as this multi-tech conduit MTCDT H5 210A US EU GB multi-tech conduit gateway as well as the LoRa 915 megahertz network card and an antenna. Subtotal about $700. Now once we have our Senate developer account we can see all of our devices and gateways on our dashboard here. The standard account allows you up to 10 devices on their network for no charge. Now, if we need to add a multi-tech gateway, there's a few steps we need to do. We need to click on the plus sign and register a gateway. Go to the documentation link. And this will step you through the procedure you will need to do to install the packet forwarder software onto the multi-tech conduit. Once you've received approval, installed your packet forwarder software, and the conduit has called home, you should see it registered as active. The next thing to do is add our device. Click on the link to allocate a device EUI from Senate's EUI registry. Give your EndNote a description and use the Nucleo plus ST SX1276 Shield device type. Put in any notes and register new device. Now we can take this device EUI, app EUI, and app key and copy this information into our firmware. Now that we've built our project, we can expand the main.c file, find the commissioning.h file, and go and copy each one of the defines for the device EUI, application EUI, and application key. I always like to keep a version of the original and not delete it. Also, define static device EUI should be set to 1. Now if we go back to our Senate device information, we can copy each piece of information and place it into our project, keeping the format the same. Now let's rebuild. Now that we've built our project, we can download and debug our application. Click Run or Go. Head over to our Senate dashboard. Click on our node. And we should see a join request and a join accept uplink data up to the gateway and any downlink information 
during our receive windows. You can see our application payload data, the channel frequency number it's using, data rate, signal to noise ratio, gateway number, timestamp information, and lots of other analytics. In our final installment, we'll take our boring hexadecimal payload data, forward it onto an application server dashboard where we can more easily visualize the data. See you then.